That missile was identified as a Russian A-325 Nudol hypersonic missile, launched from the Plesetsk Cosmodrome in the far north of Russia to destroy its own satellite. This event marked Russia's initial test of a direct ascent anti-satellite weapon, signaling the inevitable development and deployment of such weaponry. Whether it targeted their own satellite or not, this act escalated tensions toward potential space warfare. Subsequently, six months later, as Russian convoys moved toward Ukraine, cyber operatives compromised Viasat's virtual private network, disrupting communications vital to the Ukrainian military through malware deployment, showcasing an unprecedented level of disabling space-based assets in warfare. The following year, Houthi militants in Yemen, likely supplied by Iran, launched a Garda-110 ballistic missile toward the Israeli town of Eilat. Israeli defense forces intercepted it with an Arrow 3 missile, marking the first physical military engagement in space, occurring more than 160 kilometers above Earth's surface. This underscores the increasing importance of space, particularly the orbital space around Earth, both economically and strategically, due to its utility in communication, observation, and navigation. The significance of orbital space lies in its specific characteristics, influenced by its distance from Earth. Satellites in different orbits have distinct attributes dictated by gravitational pull and required rotational speed. For instance, a satellite 240 km above Earth orbits at around 27,300 km per hour, while one at 35,000 km above Earth needs only 11,260 km per hour, maintaining synchrony with Earth's rotation. This synchrony allows equatorial satellites to remain fixed relative to Earth's surface, a crucial economic advantage given the exorbitant costs of satellite deployment. For instance, consider DirecTV, the American satellite television provider, which reportedly invested between $300 million to $400 million per satellite. This substantial investment was rationalized by their utilization of geostationary orbits. When they launched their first satellite, DirecTV's one, it was positioned precisely 35,764 kilometers above the Galapagos Islands, specifically at 91.1 degrees west of the prime meridian. Notably, this location coincided closely with the mean center of the U.S. population in 1993, providing optimal coverage to a significant portion of Americans at the time. Without the feasibility of geostationary orbits, the economic viability of many satellite applications, including DirecTV services, would have been compromised, necessitating multiple satellites to achieve equivalent coverage within a specific geographic region. This particular segment of space experiences high traffic, as exemplified by Viasat's strategic placement of its initial satellites in geostationary orbits to efficiently serve high-demand areas such as North America, Europe, and the connecting oceanic regions. Meteorological agencies like NOAA or the Japan Meteorological Agency also leverage geostationary orbits to maximize their observational capabilities over regions crucial for weather forecasting. Furthermore, the versatility of orbits enhances their value. Satellites can operate at altitudes as low as 167 kilometers above Earth, offering proximity for applications requiring close monitoring. SpaceX's Starlink system, for instance, has revolutionized satellite internet by deploying satellites approximately 550 kilometers from Earth, significantly reducing signal latency compared to geostationary orbits. This proximity facilitates faster data transmission, enabling services like video calls with minimal delays. The vast range of altitudes between a few hundred kilometers and 35,764 kilometers offers a spectrum of capabilities. With careful consideration of trade-offs, satellites can be positioned to provide tailored coverage of Earth's surface, making them invaluable assets for military operations. The attributes that make satellites conducive to civilian applications, such as widespread communication or observation, are equally advantageous for military purposes, including communication and surveillance. Moreover, the secrecy surrounding military activities in space adds another layer of complexity, as the true nature and ownership of satellites often remain undisclosed to the public, despite their trackability. While the launch of rockets garners attention, the exact functions and operators of satellites often remain shrouded in secrecy, highlighting the clandestine nature of military operations in space. On June 6, 2022, a Falcon 9 rocket launched a Global Star Communications satellite from Cape Canaveral. 
However, the booster unexpectedly landed on the SpaceX Autonomous Spaceport drone ship instead of returning to the launch site. This deviation puzzled observers as the satellite was light and destined for low Earth orbit, suggesting ample fuel for the booster's return. Further scrutiny revealed the presence of four secret satellites attached to an extra payload adapter. Despite speculations, these satellites, believed to be DOD-operated, remain shrouded in secrecy, underscoring the opacity surrounding military satellite launches. Similarly, the public is largely unaware of the purpose or function of many U.S. military satellites, highlighting the unprecedented level of secrecy in this domain. This secrecy, while protecting military assets, also renders satellites vulnerable due to their predictable orbits. For instance, GPS satellites, essential for various civilian and military applications, are critical targets despite their pivotal role in daily life. The vulnerability of satellites stems from the absence of defensive geography in space, making them easily trackable and susceptible to attack. This inherent vulnerability has been acknowledged since the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, which established guidelines for space activities in anticipation of escalating warfare beyond Earth's atmosphere. Article 4 of Space Regulations addresses the prohibition of nuclear weapons and military activities on celestial bodies such as the Moon. However, it lacks provisions regarding conventional weapon placement in orbit, leaving potential loopholes in regulating military buildup and safeguarding crucial orbital infrastructure. The absence of such groundwork poses significant challenges, particularly amid escalating tensions among major space powers like the US, Russia, and China. Recent developments in space warfare, including reports of a Russian satellite with a nuclear element, highlight the growing militarization of space. Major powers are actively developing offensive capabilities, categorized into kinetic and non-kinetic attacks targeting satellites. Despite the secrecy surrounding these projects, occasional tests reveal advancements in Earth-to-space attacks by major spacefaring nations. The offensive potential of satellites themselves adds complexity to the space arms race. China's Shijian satellites equipped with robotic arms and Russia's launch of Cosmos 2542, followed by the deployment of a smaller subsatellite with projectile capabilities, demonstrate the evolving nature of space-based weaponry. As space becomes increasingly militarized, concerns over satellite vulnerabilities and the potential for space debris proliferation escalate, underscoring the urgent need for comprehensive regulation in this domain. Over the past decade, various offensive capabilities have been deployed in space, including satellites equipped with arms and those used as projectiles. Despite their seemingly rudimentary nature, the consequences of utilizing such capabilities could be immense. Space warfare poses significant risks, potentially resulting in a cascade of debris that threatens operational satellites and spacecraft. The exponential increase in space debris coincides with events such as China's direct ascent test and satellite collisions. These incidents have heightened concerns about the safety of astronauts and the integrity of space infrastructure. The potential for collisions creates a domino effect, escalating the risk of further debris generation and compromising orbital operations. Similar to nuclear warfare, offensive capabilities in space act as both deterrents and potential threats. In response, the U.S. Department of Defense DOD, has developed a strategy focused on enhancing the resilience of satellite architecture. This includes initiatives such as the Proliferated Warfighter Space Architecture System, which aims to expand the satellite constellation for missile tracking and communication purposes. By deploying satellites in low Earth orbit, the DOD seeks to improve the system's resilience while maintaining cost-effectiveness. However, the militarization of space raises significant concerns due to the essential role satellites play in various aspects of modern life. From global positioning services to meteorological forecasting and internet connectivity, satellites are integral to numerous sectors of the economy and contribute to public safety. As such, the militarization of space jeopardizes these benefits and underscores the need for international cooperation to safeguard space as a shared resource. As launch costs decrease and technology advances, innovators continually discover new ways to leverage the benefits offered by Earth's orbit. For instance, a recent milestone was achieved with the successful test of automated drug manufacturing in space. This development has the potential to revolutionize pharmaceutical production due to the unique capabilities offered by microgravity. 
Disrupting these capabilities would have significant repercussions for Earth, potentially rendering certain orbits unusable due to space debris pollution. The situation parallels the nuclear militarization dilemma, where nations feel compelled to develop anti-satellite capabilities as a form of deterrence in response to perceived threats from others. However, as the risks associated with space warfare become more tangible, it becomes evident that conflicts in space pose a comparable level of devastation to nuclear warfare. Similar to efforts for nuclear non-proliferation, there is a pressing need to prevent the spread of space weaponry, despite the challenges posed by the conventional nature of the technology. Unfortunately, solutions to this dilemma remain elusive. It is essential that stakeholders recognize the gravity of allowing earthly conflicts to extend into space and strive to prevent the catastrophic consequences of space warfare. Maintaining space as a domain free from mutually assured destruction is imperative to safeguarding global security and prosperity. What is your opinion on this matter? Share it with us in the comment section below.